Hello and welcome back to Let's Make a Game in C++ and we have reached episode 10 which is a ni nice milestone for a um, series that's been going on for 3 months. There could have been a lot more videos but I just didn't make any more. But we are at episode 10 and a lot of more episodes will come in the future. Uh, I should give a thanks to all the subscribers and followers because I've reached over 110 subscribers and they're growing every day and thanks for all the positive feedback and so on so if you want to if you're not subscribed yet and like my series then subscribe and also comment on what would you like to see next because I'm currently out of ideas what to do next. Uh, also a note for the previous episodes, if it's not working for you because loading images can be quite a problem, then copy all of my code, replace your code with mine, compile and run and test with your image so that you can see if it the fault is in the image or in the code. If it's not the code then I'll upload a test image so you can try it. Uh, there can be some problems with loading images but I hope you will successfully find it and solve it. Now let's come to this episode and in this episode we're going to do small add-ons to the game that have been requested in the previous videos and first I'm going to do is to place images. We have a background image, not really special, I did those images really fast, so this is going to be the background. We have a small image for the ball, we have an image for the bricks, and an image for the pad. We're going to see how that looks in game. And this is the old image that has been used for the pad in the previous episode. So we're going to replace that with those images. As you can see, I have all the images where the application is on Windows. You have to put it in the project folders and so on. I will upload those images and put a link in the video description. So first, let's get to adding those images. So this is our code from last time. And let's add those images to the program. Down here where we have the loading image for the pad, let's replace test PNG with pad PNG because that's the name of the image file. So let's compile this. And as you can see, we have a new texture for the pad. Not anything special, but it works. Now let's load the other images. Let's create space for the other image. So one is going to be ball texture, then we have brick texture and the background we're going to call it back texture. Set all those to zero and then we load it using the function. So ball texture is load texture and we call ball PNG. Then we have brick texture is load texture brick PNG and back texture which is the background is going to be load image back PNG. So those are the names for the images and those for pad, ball, brick and back textures are where the textures are actually stored. So let's get to rendering those textures to the screen. This is our drawing part and first we're going to render the background. And we are not actually rendering the background so we uh, have to code that ourselves. So we have the start rendering phase, we set the matrix, 
we set the white color and now we can draw the background we have GL enable here and GL bind texture here so we're going to copy the GL bind texture here and we're going to bind the back texture which is texture for the background and now we can start rendering a big rectangle that fills the whole back area of the game so we do a GL begin GL quads and now we have to use GL text chord 2D 0 0 so that's the upper left corner and the GL vertex to F to set the first point which is the upper left corner of the screen which is 0 0 so I'm going to copy that we need to specific four points and a GL end at the end so this is the upper left the upper right is GL text chord 1 0 and the coordinates are 600 0 so that's the upper right corner of the screen the third corner is bottom right which is 1 1 for the texture and 600 400 in positions X and Y and the last one is lower left which is 0 1 for the texture and 0 600 for the position so what we have here is we enable textures bind the background texture rendered a big rectangle and pasted the texture on it and then we simply change the texture to pad and draw the pad and so on so let's compile this and run it and we have a nice background image well not really nice but it is something so let's do the same for the ball and for the bricks so we have gl begin texture gl bind texture we're going to need that and we also don't have to disable gl texture 2d because we use textures all the time so we don't have to disable them but if you switch between using textures and not using them so only primitives then you have to gl enable and disable the textures when you don't need them or you will get strange results so this is the rendering of the pad and this is rendering of the ball so before we start rendering we bind the texture gl oops wrong paste gl bind texture we need that and we bind the ball texture now we simply have to add the gl text coordinate functions but to bit before the position of the corners of the ball so it's pretty straightforward it's, it's always the same first one is zero zero then it's one zero one one and zero one and let's do the same for the bricks also make sure that we have red color here for the ball change that to white color before because when we render textures we have to have white color and now let's do the same for the bricks we bind the texture we actually set the color first but it doesn't matter so we bind the brick texture and then we put the GL text coordinate functions before we set the position of the points it's the same as above so 0 0 1 0 1 1 and 0 1 and now we have a trick with the bricks because if you saw the texture before it has white parts of it and we usually we set the color to white when we render a texture because if it's not white then the color then the color we're going to seep through the texture is going to go through the white parts of the texture 
and we can actually use that so that we only need one image for different colored bricks because if we have purple color when rendering this texture then those white parts are going to be purple and the black parts are going to stay black and when we render the image with blue color then the white parts are going to be blue so we can use that as an advantage to s use the same image for different colored bricks so we're not going to change the colors here to white where we render the bricks and at the end we do want to do a gl disable gl texture 2d compile this and run and as you can see we have a background a texture for the pad a texture for the ball and different colored textures for the bricks one is blue and one is purple now some of you have been requesting that we want to have dynamic movement of the ball so it doesn't always go the same that we want that if it's on the right side of the pad it goes right and if it's on the left side it goes left and now we're going to do that but first I'm going to do a little explanation how we're going to achieve that it's not anything complicated but I'm just going to do it so let's say this is actually yeah this is the collision box of the ball and this is the collision box of the path and what we want to do is first get the x positions because this is the x axis we want to get the difference between the ball's middle position and the pad's upper left corner and we do that by subtracting the pad's x position from this x position and with that we get a number from 0 to 80 because the pad's width is 80 pixels and by subtracting the ball the pads x position from the balls uh, x position we get a number from 0 to 80 and that gives us something we can work with and we want the x speed of the ball to be from minus 1 to 1 and we cannot do that with a number from 0 to 80 so what we have to do is subtract 40 from that so that we get a range from minus 40 to 40 now that's already better because we have a range from minus to plus so minus 40 is going to be here on the left side and 40 is going to be here on the right side and 0 is in the middle of the pad now that's still too much of a velocity because 40 pixels a second is very fast so we simply have to divide the number we got by a big number like let's say 100 because if we divide 40 with 100 we get somewhere 0 0.2 something and that's a good speed that we want to have when the ball is at the right edge of the pad and we're somewhere in the middle then the 0 divided by 100 is 0 if it's a little to the right like 10 10 divided by 100 is 0 0.1 and it goes the same in the minus direction so that's the approach we're going to take and let's first find the part where we test for collision and here it is we check the collision between the ball and the pad and if there is a collision we set the y velocity to negative now we also want to change the x velocity so first let's make a temporary value and assign ball 
x plus ball with height divided by 2. So this gives us the middle x position of the ball. So x plus half of its width is the middle of the ball. Then we subtract the pad's x position, which is my x. So temp is temp minus my x. Now we have a number from 0 to 80, roughly. There are small differences, but it is from 0 to 80. Now, as we said, we subtract 40 so that we get a number from minus 40 to 40. And at the end, we simply have to divide it by a larger number, which is 100, which should give us speeds from 0 0.252, I mean from minus 0 0.25 to 0 0.25 roughly I just did that calculation in my head so it's not precise but it's somewhere in that area and once we calculated the speed we can simply set velocity x to temp so we set the x velocity to what we just calculated and that's basically it we already have dynamic movement of the ball let's compile this and run it as you can see it goes right, right again, let's go left. It's much more fun to play like this. If it's somewhere in the middle it go almost straight up and so on. So this gives us a much different experience every time we play because previously the ball always went the same path. We just had to bounce it off. Now we actually can control the ball on how it's going to move. And this is the second edition, which some people wanted. And the last edition we're going to do is check when we destroyed all the bricks. And for that, we're going to make a timer. So let's make a timer here. And uh, let's call it destroyed destroy it and set it to zero now every time we destroy a brick let's add one to that number so that's here this is the x-axis checking and y-axis checking so before the break statement we add one to the value of destroy it And now we simply have to check when destroyed has reached the same number as the size of the bricks. So let's see where we are checking. So this is our reset function from last time. When we reset everything when the ball hits the bottom of the screen. So let's add an additional condition to this because we want to reset the game if the ball hit the bottom and if we broke all the bricks. So we do an OR here. You can type OR, but I prefer to do the two vertical lines. So if the ball hit the bottom of the screen OR destroyed is equal to bricks. So the game is now going to restart if the ball hit the bottom or if the destroyed has reached the same amount of bricks that are on the screen because if that happened then that means that all of the bricks have been destroyed and we also have to set destroyed to zero when we reset the game now let's compile this and we have a nice game we can play I'm not going to destroy all the bricks now but I presume it's working so that's all for today's episode, it's been a long wait since the last time, I hope you like it, well not the wait but the new episode, uh, subscribe if you like the series and please comment, add suggestion on what to do next, I'm not going to do sound next, 
and not even text rendering. I'll be doing text rendering in the near future, but not in the next episode. But do give suggestions on what you want to see next. And if you have any questions, then write in the comments. Or if it's a larger question, send me a direct private message because answering to big questions in the comments is awkward. And that's all for today. I hope you like it and see you next time.